Hey there. It is time to set up the big guns. Tonight is first light night for at least the GT81 with the um, monochrome ASI 2600mm and I will have to uh, tinker a bit with the Edge HD and its new off-axis guider. So hopefully it stays clear enough tonight to get both of these tasks done. If not, well, I have at least something to show again on my YouTube channel. I brought my mount to Ganymedes when I bought all the equipment so I could do some fit checks. Um, and this is why the legs are all uh, in its uh, stowed position. Because when I use my mounts in the garden, I fully extend the legs. And I know this is not the way you should do things because stability and stuff. But when I extend the legs fully, I just get a whole lot more of the sky that I can uh, can use to image. One of the downsides of bringing all your equipment to a shop is that you also have to reconnect everything again. So in this case, setting up needs uh, some more time than usually. So finally, that is one setup. Now the second. The second setup also needs to be fully extended and um, placing this one is a little bit more cumbersome because um, yeah well I haven't yet marked the spot to uh, place the mount but we will fix that next morning stop looking at my ass First, the uh, counterweights. Okay, now I have two setups ready to go. Oh no, I need polar alignment. Two times polar alignment. Well, you already know how that looks, so uh, I'm going to skip that, okay? This should be a new Olympic sport. Synchronous meridian flipping. The DG81 was set to go to a different target, so it uh, slows a bit further than the HHD did. Hey, hello. It's uh, two o'clock in the night and uh, the HHD is busy imaging M97. And on the other end of the garden, somewhere over there, the GT81 is imaging the, um, what did I set it to image? <laughs> I forgot. Uh, uh. Oh yeah, Makarian's chain or something like that. I never know how to pronounce it in English. It's time to go to bed.
The usual morning ritual starts with checking if the scopes are in the home position. So I can already see if, uh, yeah, if things went as planned. I can then also already turn off the ASI Air Pro using the app. And the plus, I need a little bit uh, longer in its, uh, in its on configuration. So I can copy the logs off of the ASI Air Plus. So I can connect to it through, through the, uh, uh, the network and then I copy my logs. Then I can go outside to physically turn off the ASI Air Pro on the GT81 and I will then also move the USB stick to the ASI Air Plus. And then I can use the app again to move all the files from the EMMC, the internal storage device of the ASI Air Plus, to the USB stick. This was in March and um, I had an unusual stretch of clear nights in those days. So the scopes remained in the garden. The only thing I did was putting the dust caps back on. Um, yeah, and I left the scopes in their spot. So I could uh, just simply turn on the scope and the mounts and then start imaging again on the next night. I save all those ASI Air logs so I can use them in an Excel sheet that I created that shows me when I used which device. This gives me an, uh, an idea of the amount of clear nights that I have. And you can clearly see the unusual stretch of clear nights in March. Ever since I had my power switch fail on the SEM40, I never used the on and off switch anymore. So I simply unplugged the mount instead of using the switch. A neat little trick to get your mount almost polar aligned. I just hammer a few of those. I think they are called curtain rods. I'm not sure if that is the correct name in English. I will hammer these down in my lawn, put some brightly colored flat hat uh, uh, bolts or something, also don't know what they are called in English, um, and then I can find the almost correct polar alignment every time in this position. Because of that flat hat screw, I can even do some lawn mowing without having to bother about those markings in my lawn. So, currently I have my telescope mount set up, fully extended, with the mount hats on top of the tripods. The counterweights not mounted, so I can carry them intact outside. Um, I think my setup time with the three markings in my lawn takes me about 10 minutes if I am really quick. Um, so let's say 15 minutes. 15 minutes each and then I'm also polar aligned. So within 30 minutes or something I can start imaging. And if you ask me that's really nice. It's almost as nice as having a peer. Yes, I'm looking at you, Ben, and Luke, and all those other awesome YouTubers who have a permanent setup and an observatory in their garden. Oh man, I'm jealous. <laughs> no, really. Uh, this is very, very cool to have two setups if only my camera would be working, 
I mean the camera that I use on the Edge HD. As you probably saw in my last video, yeah, that camera is gone. It's uh, on its way to China, hopefully being repaired, and then uh, I can continue to be the Lord of the Bricks. <coughs> well, thank you for watching this video. I hope it was some, uh, yeah, something informative. Uh, I hope people with a lawn can also create a semi-permanent setup as I have uh, using that technique with the metal rods in the in the um, in the grass. Yeah, that's the word I was looking for. Yeah, I th hope to see you in the next video. So if you want to stay up to date, please subscribe and ring the bell and um, be updated on every new video that I create. And um, if you want to look at something else, like for instance that situation where my camera died, then you can uh, look here uh, to that video. See you next time. Clear skies.